Hey, what's going on YouTube? What's up guys? So ever since I posted my coding interview video, a lot of you guys have been at, well like, like five, <laughs> have been asking me to do some coding interview problems in front of you guys. The problem is I haven't actually done these problems in about six months or so. And when you don't do them that frequently, you get really rusty and you need to stay sharp on these things. Yeah. Luckily- Well, you gotta stay sharp if you're going to interview. Yeah, not, yeah. You're not interviewing then. Neither of us case. are interviewing yeah, right so. now, but we thought it'd be fun to throw some problems in front of ourselves and mm -hmm. walk through them with you guys. It's probably gonna be really trash, yeah. but let's it's hope- It's gonna for be the... really raw. Let's call it- it's gonna be Yeah, raw. really raw. <laughs> Let's hope for the best. Luckily, I'm not trying to sell a course or anything, yeah. so it's okay if I look bad. Uh, let's get started. Let's do it. <laughs> Round one, fight. Okay, so uh, first problem, product of array except self. You want to read that out? Yeah, so, damn, I don't think I've seen this before. So given an array of n integers where n is greater than one, return an array such that the array output is equal to the product of all the elements of I can't even read this out loud. Like, it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> okay. I feel like we just gotta okay. code it. Personally, I just look at the input and output, and then we'll just figure it all out. Alright, alright, yeah. cool. So, we got four <laughs> integers in our input. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And each one, it's the product of all the other numbers in the array. Product of all the... Yeah, so we got one, two, three, four. So, this first spot is yeah. two times three times four. This one is one times three times four. This oh. one is one times two times four. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're screwed up. No, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying I'm like trying to remember how you're supposed to do this. All right. You know everybody been waiting on that baby, man. Okay, so I didn't explain this very well in the video, but basically, this is the drawing that I sketched out. These lines show how the elements in the input are being multiplied together to each index in the sample output. So the key here is that every single possible solution is just recreating this, but in different orders. Multiplication can happen in any order. So if you look at how I drew this intuitively, that is the naive solution. I just went through each index here, passed through every element in the input, and multiplied them except for the current index. That takes n squared time. Are there any assumptions we can make about this drawing that can make us do better than that? So basically, the premise of my approach is imagine iterating through the array. You're going to have to do that no matter what. At each point in your iteration, is there anything you can do with what you've seen so far and the current number that you're on that you know you're going to need for the final solution? Yeah. Let's just walk through this initial example. Okay, so let's say we're at one right now. Uh, I can keep track that I've seen one. I don't know what data structure I'm going to use, but let's just say it's just like a number. We've seen one. Yeah. So now we move on to two. So now by the time I'm at two, I know that I've seen one. Yeah. I know that... I need to keep track of two for future, future parts of the iteration. Right. But I know that in this spot, in the final array, I'm gonna need to use what I've seen in the previous part. So I know this value is going to need the one somewhere in there. So let's just create another array, which is like our temporary like solution that we're building. Yeah. Um, by the time we hit three, what have we seen so far? We've seen one and we've seen two. Mm -hmm. right, do you follow? So we know that our product here is going to need to include one and two as factors. Mm -hmm. So we know that we've seen, so far we've seen one and two. So I guess we can save the product. Yeah, so we know we know that this is gonna need to be in this product somewhere. Yeah. And that's all the information we have so far. So now we move on to four. We know that we've seen one, two, and three. The product of everything to the left here is going to need to be in this part, in the final solution. So far, we've made use of everything we've seen in this first pass. Each element in our temporary solution is now the product of everything to the left of each element. If we can actually just do this same thing, except from the other side, yeah. we'll get the product of everything to the left, the product of everything to the right, and multiply them with, you know, together. And that would give us our final solution. Yeah. So now we can just se separate this into separate parts. So yeah. we know we're going to need um, one pass from the left, one pass from the right. And at each point, we're gonna have a temporary solution uh, array. It's the same size as your input. Yeah. And then I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, and then the last step would just be multiply the, the, the product of this, or rather multiply the outputs of these. Right, right. So let's call this step A. Yeah. Let's call this step B. And step C would just be multiply a result of A times the result of B. Yeah. All right. All right, Sound cool. Sound good? Let's code this. All right, let's code. <laughs> so, oh my god. Oh my gosh. So as you can see, like we already solved most of the problem, or we actually solved the entire problem on paper, right? So the coding right. part should be the relatively easy part. Yeah. 
Uh, so let's start off with step A. So I'm just gonna, the way I like to do it, obviously talk it out, but I, I like to just leave comments just yeah. so people know exactly what I'm doing. So we'll call this step A. This is what we're gonna do, pass to left side. Uh, or I think you wrote from left, right? So yeah. do pass from left, then we'll do step B, pass from right, and then step C, we'll do A times B. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll do, a, we'll start, so we're gonna start off with the for loop, and then we wanna look at essentially each index, right? Anytime you wanna look at each individual piece of the array and do some kind of function on it, that's when you do a for loop. Right. All right, so we're gonna do a pass from the left. We're gonna iterate through all of the elements, and at each element, we are going to insert into our temporary solution mm -hmm. um, the product of everything to the left of the current element. All right, so, so far we're creating an array which is gonna store our result, mm -hmm. and then we're keeping track of product from left, which is basically the product of everything we've seen so far in this initial loop through the array. Yep. So now we iterate through the indices, and at each index, we're going to insert into our result array the product of everything we've seen so far, and yep. that's just going to be product from left. By default, we're using one. If it was zero, it would just zero everything out, and we right. don't want that. Now we need to update our product from left because we've seen a new element. So now we say product from left times equals, or just for clarity, I'll say equals product from left. So the current, what we have currently. Right. Times the current element. Right, nums at index. All right, so this looks good so far. And then now we have another pass from the right. So what we're going to do is from index in range len nums. Len, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is basically going to be the same exact code, but for the right. You know everybody been waiting on that baby. Huh? So we couldn't really figure out how to. In oh my gosh, I can't explain this. Well, I wouldn't say we couldn't figure it out. You didn't even try. I'm pretty sure that was the right notation. <laughs> okay. So so I wasn't sure how to actually iterate through an array in yeah. the reverse order in Python. So we're just gonna do this like the written out kind of way, but yeah. it's the same runtime. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is do what we did before. We're gonna yeah. keep track of product from right. Yeah. Right. So I, I think the point here is. This is kind of what happens with the code. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, I've been coding it in Java for the past few days. I think you're, you're coding it in what language? Like uh, it's Dart? Been and like, like Dart, yeah. And like, yeah. It's kind of like. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> obviously, we should know this off the top of our heads. We're extremely rusty. Usually, we could just Google it, but to keep it true to the interview setting, yeah. you don't know exactly how to use a method. Do what you do now. Do what you do now, yeah. Okay, so we didn't need to multiply them manually because we're gonna multiply them as we go. Yeah. So this should actually just be return result, uh, just for clarity. Multiply with results from step A. All right, All right let's run the code. Let's, let's see what do happens. it. All right. Ah. Uh, out of out of range. Okay, so this is line twelve. Oh yeah, you gotta initialize it with four. Faster than 89%. There bro. we go. That's like, a B, that's, that's like a B plus. Yeah. Actually, that doesn't make any sense. That means you're faster than 89%. Okay. All right. I get, yeah. get coffee for that. All right. Yeah. I think we killed it. All right. Good. Yeah, you did for <laughs> most of that. Right, so that was really scrappy. But the premise of how I got to the solution is just asking this question. Is there anything I can store at each part of this initial iteration yeah. that I'll use later on in my final solution? Yeah. So we know we're going to need to iterate through the array at least once. Yeah. So we know that at each index in this first pass yeah we have the product of everything to the left that's yeah. all we can work with that's all we have with one iteration right all we need to do is just get the product of everything to the right yeah and then just do that by iterating from the right side yeah. to the left and we should yeah. be good to go yeah basically steps a b and c like we, like we laid them out all right sounds good yeah. so i think retrospectively i think the beauty of the solution is is like chris mentioned we're not really adding any more space. We just had the results array, but we're not creating like an array for everything on the left, an array for everything on the right, right? That's the reason why the runtime is faster than 90%. That's the reason why the memory usage is less than 96%. Yeah. All right, that was fun. <laughs> and I, I think if I had to improve on the solution to make it even faster, uh, there's two things I would do. 
one you know how we messed up on the whole range thing yeah, like, yeah instead of trying to manually reverse the list do it within the range function that would be a little bit more performant also just for clarity of code you saw how similar our code for the left side was to mm -hmm. our right side you could have abstracted that into a single helper function mm -hmm. with some parameter to say like this is for left and this is for right all right so you want to go into another problem not really Bye.